Well, several days ago, I showed you a video about paternal haplogroups, and so today it is all about maternal haplogroups. Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics, where we help you understand your DNA, climb your family tree, and write the story of your ancestors along the way. We do this through our YouTube channel, through online education, and through books that we write. So if you would like to check out more of some of the other options, you can look in the description below. Now the paternal haplogroup was from your father's father's father. It is carried on the Y chromosome. On the mitochondrial DNA, we actually get a maternal haplogroup, and this is from our mother's mother's mother. Now, one of the interesting things about this is both men and women have a mitochondrial DNA from their mother, and so they have that maternal haplogroup from them testing. Only males can test to be able to get a paternal haplogroup. So everyone can test for a maternal haplogroup. Only males can test for a paternal haplogroup. Now, because mitochondrial DNA is much smaller than Y chromosome or any of your other DNA, it was actually the first to be studied and the first time that haplogroups were named. Now, the haplogroup naming actually started with A, B, C, and D. It made perfect sense. We're going to start with the first four letters of the alphabet. And at that time, what they were researching is they were researching the native populations of the Americas. And so A, B, C, and D represent haplogroups that are found almost exclusively in the Americas. There are some branches that they have traced back into Siberia and Northern Asia, but for the most part, all Native Americans in North and South America are usually one of haplogroups A, B, C, or D if their mother's 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 mother was also in the Americas. Now, as this study of haplogroups continued, they just kept on adding on new letters, and so it wasn't in any kind of ordered fashion. If you remember the paternal haplogroup video, it actually followed from A through to the end from Y chromosome Adam until the more recent ones. Mitochondrial DNA or the maternal haplogroups do not follow this process. In fact, there's no relation between the letters of the mitochondrial maternal haplogroups and the Y DNA paternal haplogroups. So just because you are one letter in what maternal haplogroup does not mean that you're going to be anywhere close to that letter or anything to do with that letter in the maternal haplogroup. Again, if we go over to family tree DNA, we can see an interactive portion of this map that we can use to trace our own ancestry. So we can see as far as myself, my mitochondrial DNA, where it's happened. It started with Eve, which is about 120,000 years ago. You'll notice that this is actually much older than what Y chromosome Adam is. Adam and E, when we're talking about haplogroups and mitochondrial and Y chromosomes, were not living at the same time. All these people represent is they represent the original person who is the mother or father of that paternal and maternal line of everybody else. There were lots of other people living at the time and you received DNA from those other people as well. But the Y chromosome and the mitochondrial DNA over time have only been received from these two people. So Eve was about 120,000 years ago and that then became haplogroup L1. L1 split off into group L2 and parts of that group went to populate the rest of Africa. Mine though went into L3 which started to go into northern Africa almost into Egypt and eventually crossed the Red Sea into haplogroup N. You notice that these numberings are a little bit in order, L, and then we come to N. Well, then the next haplogroup we go to is R. We've jumped several letters. Now, R was a haplogroup in the Caucasus region and northern Iran, Armenia, that area of the uh, Eurasian continent. Similar to the R that was the paternal haplogroup, but that is really just coincidence that these R's happen to be in the same place. After R, that started migrating over into Europe as K, and that's where my haplogroup, K1, I believe it's K1A, A1, I can't remember, K1A1, A1, something like that. But that migrated into Europe, and so we can see that we went from L to N to R to K. So the letters aren't following along like they were following along with the paternal half groups. 
Likewise, if we look at some of the others, we see that M was a haplogroup that went and populated into Australia and into China. We see that haplogroup B populated somewhat into China, but also is one of the major ones that populated into the Americas. C populated up in Northern Asia and the Americas. We see that besides L1 going into the Northwestern part of Africa, we have L3 just going into the Western part of Africa, L2 also going into the Southern part of Africa as well. There are many different groups all throughout here that you can actually trace on. And again, the one thing with the lettering in the, in the maternal haplogroups is it starts with where they started their research, not with where the origin of mankind was. With the paternal haplogroups, they basically followed the origin of mankind and followed the haplogroups along. With maternal haplogroups, they followed the research. It was much easier to do the research with the mitochondrial DNA. And that's why you see this difference in the haplogroups. But remember, your maternal haplogroup naming doesn't have anything to do with your paternal haplogroup naming. So don't get those two confused. They're not related. Now, if you have any questions about maternal haplogroups, put it in the comments below and I'll try to answer it. And I hope that you like this video and I hope that you've liked this series of videos that we've done over the last month. But be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on that bell if you want to be notified about upcoming episodes.